hello everybody welcome to my channel uh, hit the like button and please subscribe and it does help out my channel and I appreciate it so very much uh, paper or plastic the leftist governor just made the choice for you the Democratic governor of California Gavin Newsom signed a measure into last law last week that requires grocery stores to stop using plastic bags to keep fruits and vegetables prior to the customer making a purchase from those stores by the year 2025. According to Senate Bill 1046, huh? retail establishments are not permitted to provide customers with the pre-checkout bags unless the bags can be composted or are composed of recycled paper material. Uh, hang on just a minute. All right, now behave. Oh my goodness, my kids are at it again, my four-leggers. Never a dull moment in this house, let me tell you. <laughs> now play nice if you're gonna play. Uh, Crystal, please stay out of it. Stay out of it, Crystal, please. Uh, let me see. Oh, where was I now? <laughs> uh, Pre-checkout bags, unless the bags are composted or composed of recycled paper materials. I may not get through this video, <laughs> but it's their playtime. I try not to harp at them too much. This makes the state <laughs> the first in the nation to get rid of such bags gradually over time. And it may very well pave the way for other states to take action that is comparable to its own. According to the Mercury News, establishments must demonstrate compliance with the new rule no later than January 1st of 2025. The particular type of plastic film cannot be recycled. According to Mercury, Nick Lapis stated that it is a pollutant in practically any bin that it is placed into. Director of the Advocacy for the Pro-Legislation and Organization Californians Against Waste is Lapis. L-A-P-I-S. Lapis. 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 It can be seen flying over landfills, flying out of the back of trucks, at recycling plants. It becomes entangled in the gears. In addition to this, it pollutes compost Lapis continues by saying, it's a difficult product, we want to get rid of it. Well, I can understand that. Yes, I can. But I make, I make a lot of use of those plastic bags. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, well. <laughs> Nonetheless, there are some people who did not support the proposal, most notably the California Grocers Association. Well, I suppose paper bags is costly a little bit more than what plastic is. In April, the organization requested that grocery stores be given until 2025 instead of 2023 to adopt the new laws for compostable materials in a letter that was written to Senator Susan Tamontes Eggman, one of the legislatures who initiated the measure. The letter was addressed to Senator Susan Talamantes Eggman. According to the reports, organization also requested that local towns not be permitted. You're going to hear the kitties playing with their uh, toy. You can hear it running and they chase that little feather thing around and around and around. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I wouldn't have bought that. Oh well. According to reports, the organization also requested that local towns not be permitted to enact identical laws or apply fines or firms who included, who include one-time use, produce bags in their operations. Eggman did not give in to one of those demands at any point. According to Leticia Garcia, Director of State Government Affairs for the California Grocers Association, they serve a key role in protecting people from potential contamination and food illnesses caused by raw packaged meats coming into contact with other items. When fragile items such as wine bottles are placed 
In shopping bags together with other items, these bags offer an additional layer of protection. Shopping bags in California are subject to attacks as well. Since 2016, when voters in California approved propositioning, uh, Proposition 67, the consumers have been required to pay a minimum of 10 cents for a recycled bag or a reusable bag that is supplied to customers when they paid for their purchases at a store. Uh-huh. I remember that. Oh, yes. Well, they got to make the money back, I guess, somehow. What did I just see here? Somebody said, hello, Betty. I must be dreaming. I could have swore I saw something there. Oh, well. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we'll be losing our plastic bags, which, you know, when you watch these uh, videos in oceans, where these whales and mammals like that, you know, the sea mammals, whatever, uh, they don't know what they're getting, and they just go ahead and eat it, you know, and sooner or later, it kills them, you know. you got to protect what's in the ocean, so you got to protect humans, so you do what you think is best for... The people and for the animals in the ocean mammals whatever I don't know but I sure do use a lot of those plastic bags but um, I reuse them and reuse them and reuse them and reuse them for everything I hardly ever throw any plastic away because I can use them for so many things but anyway I don't know. Well, here is another one. Believe it or not, here it is. Biden implicates Hunter in crime worthy of 10 years. And that's 10 years in prison. President Joe Biden appeared to confirm to a CNN anchor Tuesday that his son was guilty of a crime for which the penalty is up to 10 years in prison. The president didn't confirm anything about another crime that Hunter Biden may soon be facing charges for, but I'll get to that in a minute. Jack Tapper, Jake Tapper, sorry, who according to Deadline began a month-long gig anchoring CNN tonight, this week until the midterms, obviously wanted to launch his tour of duty with a bang, and he did so by airing the interview with the sitting U.S. president. The interview was, for the most part, pretty much what you'd expect it to be. Putin is as bad as he seems, the economy isn't, and the Democrats' chances in November are just rosy. But Tapper also asked a more personal question about the troubled life of President's son, Hunter Biden. Biden. As the President's response was surprisingly forthright. Our reporting, CNN's reporting, the Washington Post reporting suggests that prosecutors think they could, and they have enough, to charge your son, Hunter, for tax crimes and a false statement about a gun purchase. Personally and politically, how do you react to that, Tapper asked. Well, first of all, I'm proud of my son. This is a kid who got blank, not a kid. He's a grown man. This kid who got blank, not a kid. He is, he's a grown man. I guess you can put your own word in there. Don't ask me. And he got hooked on, like many families have had happen, hooked on drugs. Mm. He overcome that. He established his new life. He is, I'm confident that he is. What he says and does are consistent with what happens. 
And for example, he wrote a book about his problems and was straightforward about it. I'm proud of him. He came along and said, by the way, this thing about a gun, I don't know anything about it, but it turns out that when he made the application to purchase a gun, what happened was he said, I guess you get asked, I don't guess. You get asked the question, are you on drugs? You use drugs. He said no. And he wrote about saying no in his book. Tapper agreed that Hunter Biden had, in fact, written about that in his book. I haven't read it, so I'll take his word for it. So I have great confidence in my son. I love him. And he's on the straight and narrow, and he has been for a couple years now, Biden concluded, and I'm just so proud of him. CNN conveniently posted a clip of this section of the interview on Twitter, but you can catch the entire interview here or read the transcript of the entire show here. That's as close to a second person confession as you're going to get. The leader of the free world not only said that his son lied on a federal firearms form, he even said that Hunter Biden had confessed to doing so in writing. Hunter Biden would have completed this form, or one very much like it, when he purchased purchased a firearm in October of 2018. This version of the form was not required until November 1st of 2020. Firearms transactions recorded by the Western Journal of Scrub, S-C-R-I-B-D, scribed, scrubbed, scribed, scribed. Note the language at the top of the form, warning in big black uppercase letters. The information you provide will be used to determine whether you are prohibited by federal or state law from receiving a firearm. Certain violations of the Gun Control Act 18 U.S.C. 921 E.T. dot C.E.Q. I want to put sequential in there, but I don't think that's it. S.E.Q. are punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment and or up to a $250,000 fine. The form also asks this question. Are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant? I thought marijuana wasn't addicted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance. Warning again in big uppercase letters. The use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medicinal, medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. According to recent reports, prosecutors believe they have sufficient evidence against Hunter Biden to charge him in connection with his responses to this form which brings us to the possible penalties for lying on it. Federal law makes it unlawful for anyone connected with a firearm or ammunition purchase to knowingly to make any false or fictitious oral, oral or written statement or to furnish or exhibit any false, fictitious or misrepresentative, misrepresentative identification intended or likely to deceive such importer, manufacturer, dealer, or collector with any respect to any fact material, to the lawfulness of the sale or other disposition of such firearm or ammunition under the provisions of this chapter. But wait, there's more. That's just the gun charge. Hunter Biden is also reportedly facing possible charges of tax invasion related to failure to report income from overseas ventures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you gotta wonder what them ventures are overseas. <clears throat> I don't know. Federal law also looks unkindly at that. Any person who willfully attempts in any manner to evade or defeat 
any tax imposed by this title or the payment thereof shall, in addition to other penalties provided by law, be guilty of a felony, and upon conviction thereof shall be fined not more than 100000 to 500000 in case of a corporation, or imprisoned not more than five years or both, together with the cost of prosecution, according to IRC S, and that's a double S, sort of, or maybe it's not a S, it's a squiggly thing, 7201. That fine for individuals, by the way, was raised to 250000 in 1984. The law is clear. Federal prosecutors appear to believe that Hunter Biden's action in contradiction of those laws are also clear, though of course he is innocent unless and until proven guilty. But one question remains. Is there a Justice Department prosecutor independent enough of Joe Biden and the deep state to bring charges against the sitting president's son? I guess we're going to find out. Article, original article, Joe Biden suggests Hunter Biden committed crime that could land him 10 years in prison. WesternJournal.com My, oh my, oh my. Well, as I say, we'll see. I'll be back. And you are special. See ya. I'll be right back. Looking for my button here. <laughs> you are a blessing.